The Illinois Latino Nonprofit Leadership Academy is essentially a 10-month leadership program for non-for-profit emerging leaders and established leaders throughout Illinois. And the goal of the Latino of the Academy is to ensure sustainability and um, next level of excellence for Illinois Latino nonprofit organizations. The Leadership Academy, first and foremost, I think challenged me to dig a little bit deeper and kind of familiarize myself with what my greatest assets are and also where my areas of improvement are. So leadership doesn't stop with the person that took the academy, but how does that transfer on to your employees? And then how do we transfer that on to the community? It strengthens us as leaders. It makes us more confident. We have an attendance here at our, at our program of 40, 45 youth right now. What I would like to see is a youth step up and be able to take my leadership position at Corazon. The Leadership Academy was really great in terms of being able to see and meet and talk with other people at different nonprofits that focus on Latinos and Latino leadership, to be able to network with them and really brainstorm with them and figure out what they're doing at their agencies that really works and how we can implement that here within our own agency. This is a program that is, you'll never find anywhere else. It's unique, it's very thoughtful, it really tries to work with the individuals to build strong organizations and build strong communities. Voto por Voto is the Latino Policy Forum's first entree into voter registration. Although Latinos um, politically are growing, it's not translating into the ballot box. We felt really fortunate as an organization to be able to be a part of the campaign and to you know, encourage more constituents within our community to exercise their right to vote. We came out and did trainings so that individuals that would be participating in the program had the tools, the knowledge, and the ability, and the resources to actually execute the voter registration project. Our department was able to help train youth to go ahead and go out and do some of the voter registrations. And so how do we empower these youth to go out and make policy changes. Well, you start by voting, and I think that was really important to teach the youth and have them experience that firsthand by going out and getting other people to register to vote. Even at school, I was never, I never really learned about voting, so it was something new to me, something that I was, you know, I really wanted to try out. Through the vote, you learn so much more about your community and your elected officials and how you can actually develop those leadership skills to play an active role within your community. Obviously in our community and different parts of the country, you know, people are very hesitant to vote. You always hear that line, you know, uh, my vote doesn't matter, you know, one vote isn't going to matter. But it really does. For our community to show leadership and to show power and to show that we have influence on this country, we need to exercise our vote. Because if we want change in our community, we should vote for those candidates that we think will make that change in our community, people that we trust. Latino Policy Forum works so hard to connect with each one of us to keep us informed of the larger issues that are impacting the Latino community. The Latino Policy Forum really uh, helps and aids a lot of Latinos to get to that leadership status that we need to get to in the future. But we need more resources and we need more people that are enabled and have the training to better serve our growing communities. Not only are you funding the Latino Policy Forum, you're actually funding, educating, informing hundreds of other organizations, hundreds of other leaders who are then going to utilize that and work to make the Latino community um, better, stronger, more educated. Buenos dias. So good to see you all. 
Let's acknowledge and let's thank all the beautiful actors who are from Corazon Community Service Services, their real life constituents. Stand up, where are you guys? I know you're here somewhere. And I think here they are over here in the corner. And we chose to feature both our Latino Leadership Academy and voting, and Corazon was just a great example of an organization, one of the 100 organizations that we work with that really did well and did it really well and did both programs. And what's even more remarkable about Corazon is that both Esperanza and Kevin, who you saw in the video, were actually high school youth in Cicero when Corazon first opened up and part of the first cohort of students in their drop-in center. And they're now in management roles at Corazon Community Services, an example of the growing Latino leadership in our community. So thank you all for being here. I'm Sylvia Puente, the Executive Director of the Latino Policy Forum. It's really wonderful to see you all. As you've just seen, the Latino Policy Forum works to strengthen Latino community organizations and the leadership of these organizations. To date, we have trained over 150 leaders from 54 organizations. Many of these organizations are young, like the Latino community as a whole. Through the generosity of various philanthropic corporate sponsors, we invest, we invest about 100 hours and $6,000 in each of these emerging leaders. This is critically important because as a young community, we do not have time to wait for leadership to emerge over time. We have too many urgent issues that need to be addressed. I can honestly say that through the Leadership Academy in just uh, now our sixth year, we have catalyzed the networks, the relationships, and the trust that took me 20 years to build. For the first time, we have also sparked civic engagement in the electoral process by registering nearly 1,500 individuals to vote. And I have to confess, I'm a policy person. It's the hardest work we've ever done. I've never been said no to so many times in my whole life as when I was out there on Sunday afternoons trying to get people to register to vote. But many of our partner organizations and members of our Illinois Latino Agenda joined us in this effort for a Get Out the Vote event. And we will continue to reach out to each of these individuals that we have registered to encourage them to get to the polls and to urge their friends and neighbors as well. We're doing this, of course, in a nonpartisan manner because it's vitally important that our demographic growth translate into greater political power. In 2012, Latinos accounted for 12% of those cast, who cast ballots in Illinois. However, our population and our voice is much bigger than that, and we need to motivate and mobilize in order to be able to make it heard. We have the power, the community, we want our community to have the proper influence on the critical policy decisions which face the Latino community and which the forum works on. And when we educate youth, like Cesar Vargas, who was in the video, a young person who was voting for the first time, is critically important because in this state, there are more than 30,000 Latinos who turn 18 in Illinois on an annual basis. We have also our we have also, through the forum, expanded our capacity to train community leaders. Over the past year, we empowered nearly 1,300 community individuals by training 21 organizations who in turn trained nearly 500 parents of children in early education to let them, they, let them know that they are their child's first teacher through the award-winning Abriendo Puertas Parents Program. We trained 60 Promotores de Migración, which uses popular education to train leaders on the complexities of immigration reform so that they can, in turn, share information with their families and networks. And we educated nearly 700 Chicagoans on fair housing laws. However, the core of our work, although we have a growing emphasis, as you can see, in leadership and training, the core of our work really is still about impacting the public policy process to ensure access 
to resource it to ensure that access, resources, and investment is commensurate with Latino population growth. We do this by promoting affordable housing, just immigration reform, access to quality education, and government accountability. A few of our highlights over the past year and how your support is so important to enabling us to do this work. We worked with members of the Illinois Latino Agenda, the largest coalition of Latino nonprofits in the state, nearly 50 organizations, to pass legislation that makes Illinois only the ninth state in the nation to collect and report information on the demographic composition of state boards and commissions. In a diverse society, we want to ensure that there is diverse representation at all levels of government. And we really need to extend our thanks to Senator Delgado and Representative Golar who helped carry this bill for us. We negotiated with the Illinois Housing Development Authority and the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development to ensure that foreclosure resources and information were available in Spanish. For some reason, if you can believe it, there was initial reluctance on their part to do so. So we organized about the, the 15 housing leaders to meet with public officials on this issue and we were very pleased that after some negotiation, the website and materials eventually were translated into Spanish. Because despite some of the good news we're hearing, the foreclosure crisis is still not abating in the Latino community. Along with many of you in this room, we celebrated the passage and implementation of the temporary driver's license, an issue worked on by many in the immigrants' rights community. However, the forum negotiated especially hard to ensure ease and protection around the identification that would be necessary to verify residency. After all, you do need to prove where you live in order to be, get a driver's license. However, the original proposal called for an affidavit from the land, landlord, which we thought would be incredibly cumbersome and difficult. And just last week, we did a happy dance. And I, and I like to dance, for those of you that don't know that. We did a happy dance when advocacy efforts paid off and one of our early childhood education partners, Gads Hill, who's here today, received a capital grant to build a child care center in Brighton Park. Maricela, president of Gads Hill, is here. And let me tell you why this is important. This is so important because because Brighton Park was the number one community in the state identified as having the most need for early education and there were not facilities in that community. There will now be one. And our friends in Cicero that are also here through a child's eyes have also broken ground on a facility due to the forum's efforts to passing the nation's first ever capital grant that was focused on early learning. Together, these sites will enable hundreds of additional children to receive early education and get the head start that they so well deserve. We continue to educate and inform policymakers. Again, working with the Illinois Latino Agenda, which we helped to convene, and the Illinois Latino Family Commission, we worked on a Latino Unity Day in Springfield. We got 125 leaders to go from Chicago down to our state capitol to talk to elected officials, to meet with appropriation leaders, to gain a better understanding of the budget. And this type of activity is so important because with our demographic growth, there are now 50 state house districts in the state of Illinois that have a population that is 15% or more Latino, at the average or above. So while we are proud of our accomplishments, Part of our role is also to expand the base of knowledge on the Latino population of this, at the state. So at your um, place, place settings, you have a brand new analysis that we just put out. Um, and I'd like to just talk for a couple of minutes about it. For far too long, and while we still have many challenges, we often focus on the challenges of the Latino community. And some of you have heard me speak about the Latino paradox where we actually have two competing and simultaneous trends of challenges, but also growing and assets. assets. This sole brief, sole statistics on Latinos, speaks to some of the concrete strengths 
and ways in which Latinos are shaping the economic vitality of the state of Illinois. Eighty-five percent of the growth of the Latino population, and you can see how it's shifting over time, but 85 percent of that growth was due to individuals who are U.S. born, children and people who have migrated from other states. Immigration, as you can see, has dramatically slowed. Seventy-five percent of all Latinos in Illinois are citizens. Seventy-five percent, three out of four, as are 96 percent of all children. And if education is the path to the middle class, the good news is the number of Latino adults with a college education has doubled since 2000. The evidence of this is that, yeah, and a lot of you are here in this room. The evidence of this is that one in four Latino households, one out of every four, now has income over 75,000 which is, again is more than double the number since 2000 and on a path to the middle class. We've seen a nearly 60% increase in the Latino labor force in this state, which now numbers over one million. And those of you in the room, whether you're a business leader, a community leader, or concerned about the state's economic vitality, this next chart shows that Latinos are responsible for 77% of the growth in the state labor market since 2000. We are not just driving the growth of the Latino labor market, we're driving the growth of the state's labor market. The in also, the increase in the number of Latino households who own their own home has increased significantly, significantly. And in fact, now get this, the growth in Latino home ownership exceeded the, the state's overall growth. Do you see that? 91,000 more Latino homeowners in this state, while 61,000 growth in the overall state um, home ownership, levels of home ownership. So while the Latino paradox and the challenges remain, further examination of the positive aspects of the paradox indicate that a growing U.S.-born Latino population is driving the state's population growth and that a growing middle class is driving the state's labor market growth and the housing market growth. So, as we are fond of saying at the Latino Policy Forum, we have a shared future. A future in which the state's economic vitality and the well-being of the Latino community are inextricably intertwined. Investing in the Latino community is not just good for the Latino community, but good for the entire state. In fact, it is a cornerstone to the state's economic vitality. So now let me do my due diligence and say all the thanks that I need to thank, the individuals I need to thank. We couldn't be here without you, your continued support. Um, the forum has tremendous partnerships of nearly 100 organizations that provide the education, workforce development, housing, human, and social services that are so important to our community. They literally shape the agenda that we embark on together. So I'd like to ask all of our partners in the room, those of you that are part of our education acuerdo, our housing acuerdo, our Latino Agenda, our Leadership Academy, all of you that are part of our Media Familia, please stand up. <laughs> Stay standing. And so we're supported in this effort by, as one funder said to me once, the moral leadership of the Latino community, who is our board of directors. Please stand up. And a fantastic staff most of whom are in the back, stand up, who literally outsmart me every day. Um, let me also extend my thanks to all of you for being here. Your support really makes our work possible. Gracias. Thanks to our fantastic host committee for lending your support to the Latino Policy Forum, to our honorary co-chairs, Senator Durbin, Governor Quinn, Mayor Emanuel, um, Senator Kirk, as you heard, was not able to be with us, but did send us a congratulatory letter. 
Um, and let me also thank and again uh, acknowledge again all the elected officials, many of whom are in, in your program, but those that are able to be with us for today and who were mentioned earlier. Thank you for being here. You really make our advocacy and our, our support, our, our advocacy work so much easier. Um, thanks to John Garcia for stepping into MC at the moment's notice. And I want to really thank you all from the bottom of my heart for partnering with the Latino Policy Forum to really create a better future for our community. Gracias. Um, I now want to introduce our keynote speaker. Um, so she'll uh, have some remarks and then we'll have a little bit of Q&A. So Juana Bordas is one of the trainers in our Leadership Academy and it's a fabulous Leadership Academy and we're so pleased that she's able to join us today. Um, I don't know, what's Patty gonna do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she is president of Mestiza Leadership International. She comes to us from Denver, a company that focuses on leadership diversity and organizational change. She literally emigrated to the United States from Nicaragua on a banana boat. She was the youngest daughter in a family of eight and was the first to go to college. Her book, Salsa, Soul, and Spirit, Leadership for a Multicultural Age, won the International Latino Book Award for Leadership in 2008 and 14. And also, her newest book, The Power of Latino Leadership, received the Nautilus Book Award for books in the area of social and economic equality. She was a founder and executive director of Denver Mikasa Women's Center, the founding president and CEO of the National Hispana Leadership Institute, and served as the first Latina faculty at the Center for Creative Leadership. She has also received the Franklin Williams Award from the US Peace Corps. She was in the first Peace Corps class ever for her lifelong commitment to advancing communities of color. And Clen Blanchard, you know, the author of The One Minute Manager, says Juana Bordas is a highly credentialed champion of diversity and leadership in organizational change. We're pleased to call her our friend. She's one of my mentors. Juana Bordas, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with the Latino Policy Forum. And thank you so much for inviting me here today. You know, as I travel across the country, I see Latinos coming together like you are today to help one another, to grow their organizations and businesses, to serve their community and city, and to invest in our youth and our future. It's happening all over the country. But Chicago is certainly an example of the growing Latino power and influence, and it's because of you. So Chicago is such a strategic city and holds such a key place in our nation. But for Latinos, it's a very important city because it's the only city that reflects all of our cultures, all of our nationalities, and all of our subgroups. So Chicago can be a model on how Latinos can bring our great diversity together and to actualize the immense contributions that Latinos can make to our country. And this is true because Chicago has a history of working in partnership like you're doing today. And the Latino Policy Forum has been successful because of the many people of goodwill who are committed to building an inclusive, informed, and involved America. So many people believe that the rising Latino influence is a recent phenomena, fueled by our exploding demographics and the, the Latino political surge in the last presidential election. Today, one in six people in the United States is Hispanic. And tomorrow, tomorrow by 2050, one in three Americans will be Latino. And politically, we will comprise 40% of new voters in this century. Every year, a half a million new Latino voters are eligible to go to the polls. And we know that the first Latino president has been born. In fact, she might be right in this room. <laughs> 
But most Latinos understand that our advancement has taken centuries. Hispanics go back to before the U.S. was a nation. We were born of conquest and colonization. 170 years ago, one-third of the United States, Colorado, where I'm from, was Mexico. And after the Mexican-American War, we were deemed minorities and not recognized as an official group until the late 1970s. But despite the many challenges and obstacles our parents and our grandparents had to face, Latinos today are on the move. We are forging a strong identity, embracing our culture and language, exercising our business, economic, and political clout, and expanding our global connections. These gains have only been possible because of the vision, the contribution, and the relentless activism of our leaders. Leaders like those who are gathered here today and who gather across this country in Hispanic organizations, in Hispanic chambers, in LULAC chapters, National Council of La Raza, GI Forum, Sad Jobs for Progress, and the many, many organizations that serve our people and our nation. And as we look around the room and see the power and potential of our people, we know that this is our moment. See, si, es la hora. Because our collective efforts, because of our collective efforts, Latinos stand at the crossroads of power and can be an influential force in shaping the 21st century. Great demographic shifts are occurring. By 2030, we will be a mosaic, multicultural nation. And by the middle of this century, Latinos will make up the majority of the American workforce. Latinos will be at the headwaters of this change, of making America a multicultural mosaic. And we must prepare our young people to be the leaders of this transformation. To move forward, Latinos must forge unity among our great diversity and deeply consider who are we as a people? What is the unique contribution Latinos will make to this country and the world. The question for Latinos is ahora que? Ahora que? In other words, how will we fulfill the vision of Latino leadership, which I like to call Latino destino? <laughs> how will we build, the found build on the foundations of the past? And how will we be the architects of an inclusive, informed and involved America. This is why the model of Latino leadership is so crucial today. Our leaders have forged a legacy of inclusive leadership, of benvenido leadership, of welcome to the table leadership. Unlike traditional leadership, where power and influence was concentrated in the hands of the few, Latino leadership is not top-down, but bottom-up. It is leadership that has evolved from the community, like you today. It is leadership of the people. It is leadership of the gente. And Latino leadership embraces the power of we, the power that people have to change their lives and their country for the better. Latino leadership is leadership by the many. Can we say that? Leadership by the many. Everyone has a place at the leadership table because Latinos do not look to one leader to bring everybody together. Instead, it is thousands and thousands of leaders in communities across this country who work collectively every day to uplift our people and country just like we're doing today. And that's the new model of Latino leadership. Latino leadership is of, by, and for the people. Now that should get a, an applause, come on. <laughs> because you're the ones who have made this happen. 
You're the ones who have made leadership that has grown from our people, leadership that represents our people, leadership that is for the benefit of people. The Latino Policy Forum is certainly a powerful example of inclusive leadership. Latino strength lies in our numbers, in our collaborative work, our partnerships, and our open invitation to work with anyone who shares our vision of the future. We have advanced because of our ability to bring people together and to build coalitions. This is only possible because the Latino culture, by its very nature, is inclusive. We are a fusion people, mainly the offspring of the Spanish conquistadors and the indigenous people of this hemisphere. But many of us have other cultures and races and nationalities in our veins. It is important to remember that Latinos are not a race. We are an ethnic group, a cultural group, much like the Jewish community. Latinos come in all colors, brown, white, yellow, latte, <laughs> mocha y chocolate. <laughs> yes, they are Latinos, black Latinos. There are Chino Latinos. There are Tejanos. There are Chico Ricos. Those are, that, you know who that is? That's a Chicano and a Puerto Ricano and a very good dancer. There are Mexicanos, there are Mexicanos. And now here's where you get in trouble with Latino inclusiveness because pretty soon you have to start calling out all the subgroups, Colombianos, Chilenos, right? Okay, we love you all. We love you all. My own family is incredibly inclusive. For instance, my daughter Carmen O'Connor is Irish and Latina, so she's a leprechauna. <laughs> my brother Cristobal, who was, who was born in Nicaragua, married my Aunt Cecilia, who is Cuban, and so my nephews are Cubanicos. You know what you get when you cross a Nicaraguan and a Cuban? A really good-looking dancer. <laughs> my godson married a, Col a Colombiana and her whole family. Because when you marry into the Latino family, you marry the whole family. Our genesis has made Latinos a diverse, inclusive, and vibrant people. And we love diversity. So look at the person next to you and say, I love diversity. Come on, I love diversity. I love diversity. And if leadership experts and futurists, leadership experts and futurists, believe that diversity and the emerging multicultural society will be the defining characteristic of this century, the defining characteristic of this century, they need not look any further for a model because Latinos have diversity right at our dinner table. Somos diversity at our core. Our birthright is cultural and racial fusion. In fact, look around the room. Latinos are de colores, all the beautiful colors of the rainbow. So Latinos can be a model for the inclusive and diverse society that is rising. Look to your left and look to your right and say, you are beautiful, you are de colores. <laughs> You are beautiful. You are beautiful. You are the colores. <laughs> now, for those of you that are not Latino by birth, Latino inclusiveness has a special invitation. Latinos have elastic and extended families, people who have a special affinity and just by being here, that's you, just by being here, that's you, are invited to become comadres, compadres, madrinas, madrinos, honorary tias y tios. So we invite those of you that are not Latino by birth to join us, <laughs> huh? to join us in creating an inclusive America. to join us in healing the wounds that have separated us, 
to join us in becoming Latinos by affinity and by corazón. So if there's anybody near you that's a, a Latino by affinity and by corazón, reach out and say, compadre, comadre, bienvenido a la familia. Comadre, compadre, bienvenida a la familia. And Latino inclusiveness reaches beyond borders because Latinos are international, right? International. Latinos are culturally linked with people in North, Central, and South America. This connection should not be underestimated. In 2010, trade with Central and South America was greater than that with Europe and Japan combined. And Mexico is our third largest trade partner. Trade in this region, in Central and South America, grew 82% in the first decade of this century. Latinos are the bridge connecting this hemisphere, North, Central, and South America. Latinos also maintain close ties to the 26 countries of origin that we come from. And since over one third of the United States was Mexico, these cultural roots remain strong. We know that today we live in a global village and Latinos are strategically poised to be the ambassadors of the global age. We can reach out to the many countries that we come from. Our love of diversity and inclusiveness can also be seen in our extended families that are composed of multiple generations. Latinos honor the wisdom that comes with age. All right, now, you're all gonna get there, so this is a good thing. Latinos honor age, right? Latinos honor age, not so true in the dominant culture. So people ask me, Juana, are you gonna retire? I go, I'm just getting started. <laughs> but Latinos also honor the promise of youth and today, there are four generations working together in the workplace. Latino leadership, because it has an intergenerational spirit, can create understanding and find common ground between generations. This is why the Latino Policy Forum fights for early childhood education, why the dropout rate is not acceptable, and why we want to make sure that the dreamers have an opportunity to go to college and reach their potential. We understand that our children are our future and hold the promise of this great nation in their hands. And until the late 19, until the late, until the last decade, over 40% of Latino growth was fueled by immigrants who bring hope, determination, and replenish the cultural core. Today, as the US Congress continues debating the immigration status of so many of our people who have worked so hard and contributed so much to our nation, we can celebrate that the Latino community, that Latino leaders, that people like you have rallied for our immigrants, and we want a just and fair immigration policy. We recognize that historically immigrants have made America great. Immigrants bring initiative, hard work, freedom, optimism, faith, the belief in a better life. So too Latino immigrants are here to make a similar contribution. I know this because of my own background. Because as I came here with my mother and five of her children, to meet my father who had come earlier with my older sisters, to earn dinero to bring his family to the promised land. As I came here to this country, and as I saw my mother in her humble way with her fifth grade education, uh, with, with, with her dreams about what could be for her children, I saw her go to the parish priest and say, I can cook, I can clean. Puedo cuidar niños, puedo limpiar. 
Dame un trabajo para que mis niños puedan estar educados. Give me a job so my children can have an education. And how could he refuse a selfless soul like that? So cook, cooking and cleaning floors, my mother made sure that I was able to get an education. And I am only here today because of the sacrifices, the love, the vision, the determination, the stamina of my parents and my older brothers and sisters. And you know, when I was growing up, I did not know that my parents would be the greatest servant leaders that I would ever, make, ever meet. And I have met many great leaders in our time, but our immigrants that come here with that vision for that future, that'll sacrifice everything, because my parents sacrificed their language, their culture, They sacrificed the respect they had in community because our immigrants are not respected for who they are. And they gave up everything so that their children and so that I could be with you today and be an educated person. That's who our immigrants are. My family story is an American story. It's the story of the immigrants who have made Chicago great. Chicago is on the front lines of immigration, and it is part of your history. Because in the 19th century, with the settlement houses, you opened your arms, you welcomed the immigrants, they came to Chicago, and that's why Chicago is a great city today. And we have that legacy with the Onward House, with Erie House, with the Chicago Commons, with Northwestern University, all of these people who came together in the last century or in the 19th century to help immigrants, we must do that again today. The Latino fight for immigration is another aspect of our leadership because we believe that people should be treated fairly and given a fair chance. Latino leadership follows an activist tradition which can be found in one of our favorite sayings, si se puede. Can we say that? Do they say that in Chicago? Si se puede. Si se puede. There, si se puede. Yeah, we usually say it three times. <laughs> There was a young man from Chicago who took the si se puede theme. He translated into yes we can, and he did very well with that. And he did very well with that. Latinos have been fighting for equity for our people for centuries. And because our leadership is action-oriented, Latinos can spark civil involvement in our country at a time when our nation needs to hear and listen to the voices of its people. Latinos can spark civic involvement at a time when politicians need to remember that they are there to represent the well-being and the progress of American people and not corporations. <laughs> to be effective and strategic leaders, Latinos also have to be informed. We have to understand political systems, the rules of power, political policy issues that affect our lives, and we must know how to impact these and to leverage Our, the power of our growing numbers. You know, they have a saying in our culture, saber es poder, knowledge is power. And to ensure that our community actualizes its potential, we must have the knowledge and know-how to create positive change. This is another important role that the Latino Policy Forum plays, ensuring that Latinos have the information, the training, the collective power and the leadership to move forward. Information and knowledge are power, particularly when it is used to educate and mobilize our community. Latinos must also know the journey of our people. We owe a great debt to those who have come before us, who have paved the way on whose shoulders we stand. Knowing our past is power because it helps us understand what it took for us to get here, what it took for us to be where we are today. And it shows us what we must do to continue advancing 
and to reach our potential. But the fact is, is that many people, and particularly the young generation, don't know the struggles of the past. And if we do not understand the sacrifice, the strategies, the long-term paso a paso commitment it took to get here, how will they know how to go to the next level? How will they know how to actualize Latino power? This month, we celebrated Hispanic Heritage Month. And why do we need a special month? Well, we like to celebrate, yes? We, want, we like having our own month. But there's Women's History Month or Her Story Month. There's Black History Month, American Indian Month, and so forth. Why? Because we were left out of the history of this country. Why? Because our stories were not integrated into the American story. And how can we build an inclusive and equal America until all people's histories and all people's stories are woven into the American fabric? The Latino story is an American story. It is the story of your parents, of the railroad workers, the farmers and migrant workers, the meat packers, the construction workers who broke their back building the backbone of the Illinois economy. It is the story of my mother who got on that banana boat with five of her eight children. It's the story of the people that serve the food here today that clean our buildings, that keep America tidy. The Latino story is the story of the dream children who are our promise for tomorrow. The story of the Puerto Rican who goes back and forth to their beloved island. The Cuban refugee, the recent immigra immigrant from Chihuahua. Let's all say it, I Chihuahua! <laughs> seeking a better life for their people and their families. Yes, we must know our history because our history is our strength. Our history is our power. But it is perhaps in the alignment of America's values that Latinos will make our greatest contribution. You see, because we are a culture and because we are an ethnic group, Latinos are, are, are bound together by our history, by our language, by our spiritual traditions, and by our common values. Latinos are simply good people, buena gente, somos buena gente, because despite our tribulations of being colonized, deemed minorities, Latinos have remained a people-centered, generous, and caring culture. For Latinos, la gente, la comunidad, la familia, los niños, los abuelos, los compadres come first. We are a humanistic culture, not a materialistic culture. We are a collective culture, not an individualistic culture. Latinos are communal, cooperative, and generous. We were taught these values as children through dichos like mi casa es su casa, right? That means what I have is yours. I want to share that which I have. We were taught this by the dicho donde come uno, come dos. Uh, because a Latino would rather share their food with another person than to have someone not have enough to eat. And when you go out with Latinos to eat, everybody fights for the cheque, or they used to fight for the cheque. <laughs> or, or, they, or, they, or, or they're eating something and they're like, prévalo, prévalo. They want to make sure that if they have something good, that you try it. But my favorite is that when Latinos have a party, when I have a fiesta, and everybody comes and they bring something, it's kind of like the parable of the loaves and fishes. Because when the party's over, I have more food and drink than when I started. <laughs> so we were taught these values when we learned, for example, como puede servirle when we introduce ourselves in the Mexican tradition. Our joy comes from helping others. Because Latino leadership centers on servant leadership. How can I serve others to reach their potential? And the magic is that in serving, we also empower ourselves. Latinos also have a sense of excellence that we were, thought, that we were taught. We like to hágalo con ganas, hágalo con orgullo, right? Do it with pride, do it with energy, do it with passion. And you know that, what that is? That's the leadership trait of excellence. So Latinos are taught to do it right. Can we say that? Latinos do it right. <laughs> Latinos do it right. We do it con orgullo. We do it with ganas. With ganas. Latinos love to work. 
And we see work as a way to contribute. We have the highest work ethic of any group in the United States. We, yes, we love to work. And Latinos start small businesses as a, at a faster rate than anyone, and, La, and Latinas are at the head of the curve of that, right? We have an entrepreneurial spirit, and we can bring this entrepreneurial spirit, this creativity, this innovation, this can-do attitude to our work, to our communities, and to our political work. Yes, Latinos have wonderful assets and traits. One that is very important, there's a saying, you know, when the, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. No, but Latinos say, when the going gets tough, Latinos get positive. Because Latinos, according to a New York Times study, are the most optimistic people in the country. 75% of us believe that our lives will be better than that of our parents. Yes, Latinos are on the move. We are moving up. If you're Latino, your future is so bright, you got to wear shades. <laughs> and Latinos celebrate life. One of the things about our leadership is that we work hard but we celebrate life, gozar la vida, right? We spend more money on food, going out to eat, quinceañeras, comidas con la familia. We over-index in, in the market in that way because Latinos have a celebratory nation, nature. We celebrate life and we dar gracias a Dios for all that we've been given. Celebration strengthens the fabric of society and is a strategic leadership ta tactic because if you want people to do the hard work of community organizing, of, of working and doing other things to improve the lives of their family, you have to give them an opportunity to celebrate. Infusing these values, familia, community, inclusiveness, gracias, generosity, hard work, faith, sharing, celebration into the American mainstream holds the promise of a new America a better America, one that takes care of its people, young and old, rich, poor, black, brown, white, yellow, just like Latinos do. As Raul Esiguerre, the great Latino leader and organizational builder of the last century stated, Latinos live America's core values. Instead of asking us to change our name, to move into the mainstream and assimilate, Latinos should be saying, you should be more like us. Can we say that? You should be more like us. Hold on to your values, is what Warul is saying. Bring them into the mainstream. Today, Latinos are choosing to stay connected to their culture, to bring their gifts into the mainstream, to infuse our country with saor, with salsa and sazon. We are going to Latinize America. Y si se puede. Today, our growing demographics, our rising political power, our strong immigrant roots that continue to vi revitalize our culture, our youthful energy, our entrepreneurial spirit, our deep sense of service and love of our community, our passion and our ganas are revitalizing America. Latinos are living proof that the American dream is alive and well. Latinos will be the architects of a new America, one with diversity and inclusiveness and civic involvement at its core, one that strives to take care of its people, an America that embraces its immigrants and honors the world village in which we leave, live. Latino leadership will fulfill the hope and promise of America written so long ago in our Constitution to create a truly democratic and participatory society that is just, equal, promotes the common good, and prosperity for future generations. A society that honors pluralism and differences. The power of Latino leadership is to fulfill this vision of America, to build the De Colores inclusive society where people are truly informed, involved, 
and where they together work to build a better future for their children and those children that will come after us. So join me in a Hispanic tradition as we finish. Everybody knows about Que Viva? Yes? All right. Que Viva la Comunidad Latina! Que Viva! Que Viva the Latino Policy Forum! Que Viva! Que Viva la gente de Chicago! Que Viva! Que Viva Latinos on the move! Muchas gracias. <laughs>
She currently serves on the board of directors of the Latino Policy Institute, or forum rather, I apologize. The Chicago Low Income Housing Trust Fund. You always want to get the name of the organization correct. <laughs> I'm trying to read quickly here. I apologize. Um, also, the uh, Alliance to End Homelessness in Suburban Cook County, Hispanic Housing Development Corporation, Kumba Links, and the City of Chicago Zoning Board of Appeals. Some of her awards, the many awards, include the White House Champion of Change, the Chicago Community Trust Emerging Leader Fellow, and recently she was a 2013 German Marshall Memorial Fellow representing the U.S. Please welcome Sol Flores. We think John is just as sexy as Alex, right? Come on. <laughs> You're a great substitute. Okay, so thank you, thank you. You know, I love the phrase, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? So in other words, our success and what we do is a continuation of the wonderful efforts of those who have led before us. Now, we already heard a lot of whistles for him before, but in case you don't know who is our Champion of Change Award recipient today, I have to give you a couple sentences of his bio. He is indeed, first and foremost, our founding board chairman of the Latino Policy Forum. He has this side job as Cook County Commissioner, and we hear he has some amazing aspirations that we might hear about in just a couple of seconds. So who am I talking about? Our very own Jesus Chuy Garcia. Chuy is a dynamic and progressive leader. He's committed to reform, accountability, and transparency. He was, a first, he was first elected to the City of Chicago Council in 1986. He was also the first ever Mexican-American elected to the State Senate. He's currently a Cook County Commissioner for the 7th District. He was the founding executive director of Enlace Chicago, a nonprofit community development organization in Little Village. And as I said before, he's the founding president of the Latino Policy Forum. He's also served on the board of directors for the Woods Fund of Chicago. Chewy emigrated with his parents from Durango, Mexico, and has since lived in the communities of Pilsen and Little Village. He is our Latino Policy Forum champion of change. Chewy. Wow, I've said so much over the past uh, couple of days that uh, I'm actually at a loss. <laughs> Number one, Juana Bordas talked about Latinos and politics and flexing our muscle. November 4th, currently in Illinois, we have the lowest turnout so far in early voting. That has to be improved. If we want to progress, we want to be respected. If we want to be at decision-making tables, we have to cast every eligible vote. So I ask you, come out and vote November 4th. Very important. Two, I want to commend the board of directors of the Latino Policy Forum, the staff that does amazing work. The leadership development efforts are wonderful. Chicago is a leader nationally. Latino Policy Forum is directing that energy and channeling and cultivating that potential. I salute each and every one of you. I salute all the people who are here, all of the associates, all the supporters, all the sponsors, everyone who purchased the ticket, even if you were, especially if you were broke, okay? Because that's corazón, that's the value that we have, those are the values that we grew up with, so I commend each and every one of you. Stay sharp, stay on the case, know your environment, look to the future, and continue to inspire each and every one of us. Thank you, it's been a pleasure being the first chair of the Board of Latino Policy Forum. Adelante. And we'd just like to thank every one of you for your support that you've given us, it's even staying longer than the scheduled time. We really appreciate it, it shows your commitment, and to use again the word that Chewy used, right? El corazón que tienen ustedes. Gracias, have a great day. Thank you.